Maximilian Bolcher and my eighth grade project topic is on aviation safety. So this is fatal accidents that occurred in the commercial jet fleet between 2006 and 2015. This includes everything from collisions, flight, and bad weather, and most importantly, loss of control. As you can see from the chart, nearly 1,396 people have died in just this short eight-year span due to loss of control. Even more importantly, in the in the 2001 to 2011 year span, over 40% of casualties in the aviation industry have been due to loss of control. Loss of control refers to when the pilot is unable to maintain control of the aircraft in flight. Unfortunately, not many pilots are equipped to deal with this type of situation. So we have all stuck our hand out in the car window at some point and changed the angle of our hand. We notice that it goes up and down depending on what angle we turn. This is called the angle of attack. You may have also noticed that if you turn your hand to a certain extent, your hand will either fall back or jump. This is called exceeding the critical angle of attack. The same principle is applied in flight. Angle of attack refers to the relative wind, which is the direction the wind's coming from, and the cord line of the wind, which is the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wind. The greater the angle of attack, the more lift the plane has. However, if you exceed the critical angle of attack, the plane will no longer be in lift and will begin to stall. Stalling is one of the most dangerous events that could happen in aviation. Most people, most pilots assume that during a stall, the best way to recover from it is to pull up on the yoke, which is like the driving wheel in the aircraft. By pulling up, pilots expect to gain altitude and airspeed. However, this deepens the stall and causes the airplane to lose more lift. The proper way is to push down and give the aircraft more power. power. This allows the airplane to regain control and regain lift. Here is a short simulation of what happens if a pilot loses control of the aircraft and is going too slow. Okay. 
So this is the chief flight instructor for American Airlines giving a discussion about the 1988 Delta Airlines crash. And what's really fascinating is that the NTSB, which is the National Transportation and Safety Board, it requires that all aircraft in their flight data recorders have an angle of attack indicator so they find out what happens to the aircraft after an accident or during an accident. However, most airline companies are not willing to spend the money on training and installing these devices in the cockpit where it's visible to the pilot. How many of you have seen the movie Sully? Chelsea Sully Sullenberger is an Air Force veteran and a captain for US Airways. He was highly trained in the military and knows all the procedures for angle of attack and loss of control. On, in 2009, he successfully made the first water landing in the Hudson River, saving all of his crew and passengers, despite having lost both of his engines and up hitting multiple flocks of geese. The first manned flight was done by the Wright brothers on December 7, 1903, and since then many new technologies such as instru instrumentations, aircraft designs, and wind tunnels have been developed to get us where we are today in modern technology. There have been a cumulative 1.3 billion flight hours since 1959, and there has been much done to increase safety, but not enough to prevent loss of control events. In fact, the Wright brothers are the first to understand angle of attack as they attach string on the peak, um, the ends of their wings so they can detect the angle of attack. Okay. So the goal is, my goals were to understand the basic principles of flight and understand new pilot techniques and training. I would then apply these dis different aspects that I learned in every, everyday flights from Maui to Oahu, Hawaii, and eventually Las Vegas. It wasn't very hard to fight my mentor. My dad has been involved in the aviation community since he was 16 and is very knowledgeable in nearly all aspects of flight. He provided several resources to me as well as people to interview and even access to a national aviation meetings. My first step was to research general aviation and airline accidents in the NTSB database, which it quickly became clear that loss of control was the leading cause of death in the industry, which is over 40%. I then studied and took practice exams to prepare for my future pilot's license, which I get in between 16 and 17 years old. I then learned about experiences in flight, such as ATC, which is air traffic control, AP, autopilot, VFR and IFR, which are visual flight regulations and instrument flight regulations and also flying in poor weather conditions. I then further researched aviation safety regulations and even met with an NTSB investigator on a, trash, a helicopter crash scene in Mecca. So repetition and reviewing previous knowledge that I had already learned about aviation was extremely necessary in the success of my flight. Future concepts I learned would be based upon these previous methods I had already acquired. My dad allowed me access to meet to go to a AOPA meetings, which stands for Aircraft Owners and Pilot Association meetings. I, there I interviewed several pilots and got their opinion on the safety regulations in aviation. Along with training and speaking with numerous experts, I also discussed with a retired fighter pilot and a current test pilot, Nate Buster Jaros. Nate Buster Jaros is an F-16 fighter pilot and now works for several companies in the testing industry. We discussed how it is extremely necessary and important to install angle of attack indicators in the aircraft and train pilots to use these. We also discussed why many pilots by these accidents happen and how many pilots are ignorant of using angle of attack, either for the, for the simple reason they don't understand it, or it's just because it's different from how they learned when they first started flying. During my trip to Las Vegas, I met so, several pilots and had the opportunity to fly over the Grand Canyon. I communicated with several pilots who gave me information about the Las Vegas airspace in order for me to navigate and have my perfect flight. I utilized all my previous knowledge of air traffic control, flying in poor weather conditions, and based upon our turns to have my most successful flight. So, a few pictures of me. Ground check ups, in flight, steps to the Grand Honolulu Festival Parade. All right, reflection. In short, I feel like this topic helped me a lot in advancing my future career in aviation. I learned a lot about angle of attack and met with several pilots to help me understand my, my goals. I applied all my knowledge and procedures in flight and had one of my most successful landings I have ever done. 
I overall I completed my goals and had a successful graduate. That made me think more deeply about the career in aviation as as well as making me a better, safer aviator. I would like to thank my dad for being extremely inspirational and helping me throughout this project. I would also like to thank my family, Ms. Neal, Mr. Walsh, and the Aid team for supporting me throughout this process. We're excited. Any questions? Yeah, it's slowly happening. 